more illuminated goodies and this time uh, it's, it's an eBay item which is aimed at sort of like Land Rovers and Jeeps, things like that, and it's little 10 watt searchlight type things. And there's, these are quite popular. The keywords on eBay are, if you do a search for 10 watt, Cree, and then something like Jeep or off-road, you'll, you'll find them. And the price varies dramatically. This is £6.19 for a pair, which is good because I paid more than that, plus about £4 postage. But uh, while I was looking for the uh, original listing I came across this one. So if you shop about you can get them quite cheap and they always seem to be supplied in pairs. And one of the uh, features, I, I noticed when they came they've got three wires, red, black and yellow. And I wasn't 100% sure initially what those were because um, I, I was just expecting red and black on and off and I wondered if it was for dimming but it turns out that if you look down here it actually says, where is it? It's got a unique invincible blasting flash function. Well, that's handy. And that's what the yellow wire's for. So uh, let's uh, power this up and demonstrate. So I've got my 12 volt supply here. Let's put this up to 13.8 volts because that'll be the equivalent voltage to a fully charged uh, Land Rover battery. Probably quite a rare occurrence. Okay. So I'll connect red to red, black to black. Oh, right, that was an invincible flashing function. Because uh, initially I didn't know what these wires were, and I tentatively got a resistor and put it between the yellow to the black and then the yellow to the red. I didn't know if it was for enabling a feature, but it turns out that if you just put the positive feed straight on the yellow, it goes into hazard warning mode. Which is quite interesting. Ooh, they're bright. So let's uh, open them up and take a wee look inside. Oh, uh, what's the power? That's a good point. Let's do the maths. So that's on static, and I have to say that's quite nice. I'm just uh, that's putting quite a splash of beam with the sort of the lensing at the edge. So uh, I'll just put that over there so it's not dazzling the... And I'll try not to short out my power supply. So the power supply is at 13.8 volts. 13.8 volts. And the current that's being drawn is 0 0.304. 0 0.304. Oh, 13.8 volts times 0 0.304. And that means 4 watts. It's actually driving the 10 watt LED at 4 watts. Now how's that going to vary? What if I turn the voltage down this? Okay. When it gets down to about the forward voltage LEDs at 9 volts, the it starts dropping off. So let's put it up to 11. There's 11 volts and it's 429 milliamps. So 11 volts times 0.4 to 9 equals 4.7 watts. Okay, so actually it, it peaks slightly lower the voltage goes. It actually increases in efficiency slightly. That's odd. So what happens if I go too high? Will it just start blowing stuff up? No, the current drops off quite dramatically. That's me at the maximum in that range, uh, which is 16.33 volts times and it's drawing 264 milliamps, for just over 4 watts again, so on average about 4 or 5 watts, so not the 10 watt, I mean, well they say 10 watt, it, it is a 10 watt LED that's clearly inside it, um, as I'll show you. You can see it uh, inside there, just centrally positioned below the lens, it's quite nice actually, I quite like this. One of the things that attracted me to these was the fact that it's chunky and it's got the lens and it's got the aluminium body because it's quite attractive. He said, spanking it reassuringly. So let's uh, get the let's get these off. Now here's the thing: this was supplied quite loose, and I noticed this screw doesn't go in very far. So um, they've not really tapped it properly, or or maybe that uh, screw's just knackered. But I think it's just bad tapping. But um, also the frame, 
This one, the mounting support is all bent correctly and it's the correct size. This one has been a bit overzealous, so I think you'd need to actually fold that in a bit and then straighten up, but I think it is, by the feel of it, this is just aluminium anyway, so it's, it's going to straighten up anyway. Is that aluminium? Uh, hold on, I'm just going to get a magnet. It does feel like aluminium, it certainly didn't attract the magnet. So let's uh, pop this open and see what's inside. This looks like a steel backplate. Should have brought the magnet through, shouldn't I? Not that it really matters much. Guessing this is just a continuous extrusion, not 100% sure. Okay, I'm seeing, uh, seeing a silicon seal, a very tiny circuit board inside with a choke in it, so that's the uh, regulator circuitry. They've splooshed the uh, cable where it goes in here, but actually they've not splooshed it very well with the silicon. And it looks like they've actually shimmed the cable and tapered it down a bit. Or that, or they've just shoved it in with excessive force. So a few discrete components on that side. Uh, and a Guessing that could be... Um, I see a little five or six pin chip here, which I'm guessing is actually a regulator. And this here has a resistor from the yellow wire going to it. I think a diode, perhaps? That might just be another little microcontroller. I wonder if it's got a number on it. Let's, uh, let's look for numbers. I would try and push this in, but it's not going in. I think they have definitely shaved that wire down and wedged it in. So let's uh, get the microscope out and take a look at this. We have a complete lack of numbers in that. Okay, so that little eight pin chip is the normal anonymous eight pin chip. Ah, this is probably the regulator. Which is? PT4115. And then underneath it says 447 THT. So I'm guessing the important bit is PT4115. I'll look that up afterwards and leave some data on it. Uh, yes, and the, the chip just there, uh, that 8-pin chip. I'm guessing it's just going to probably have the same pin out. It's going to be a PIC microcontroller probably. Yeah, probably. Okay. So that's quite interesting. The, if it is a PIC microcontroller, it will be purely to flash, to add the strobing effect. It's so cheap and easy to do. I mean, PIC microcontrollers are ideal for that. Now, I thought this was going to be an aluminium extrusion, but it looks like it's machined from a solid block, because that, that's sold at the back. I was hoping it might... So how do I get into the LED? Ah. Okay. More ceiling. Is this a glass lens? Yes, it is. And the seal actually sits round the uh, lens. The lens has a rim, which is quite nice. Uh, the LED is not screwed in. Is it glued down? Yeah, it appears to be glued. I mean, it could be removed, but I wonder why they've done that. Because there's obviously two holes here they could have drilled and tapped or put screws through, self-tappers, or... Well, having said that, it, for, it seems very squishy, so it probably is just silicon that's holding that in place, but it is glued down quite firmly. I did notice when I was looking at this earlier that one of the chips... Uh, th this is a standard... Um, 
10 watt LED and it's probably a 3 parallels 3 series. Oh, let's find out. I can shoot that. I can actually put the power supply on and I can... Uh, let's put the power supply on it to see about... I'm not sure if the actual switching regulator will like this much, but hey. Uh, I'll stick a resistor in the series and I'll just see if I can uh, just power this up at low current. Yes, I can. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. So, uh, it's not really a Cree LED because, as I noticed before, um, the the LEDs are gubbed. It's, they're just using reject LEDs again. And uh, the lower the current, the more LEDs go out. They're shit LEDs. That's a bit of a disservice to Cree. But as the power goes up, um, when it's running at the full 4 watts as such, um, I did notice, looking through the glass, that um, there was just one of the LEDs a bit dimmer, but uh, most of them were lit, so that they are just bad, they're just crap LEDs. But having said that, you know, I, I bought this with the, I just like the aluminium extrusion, I like the lens, I like the housing. So um, it's, it's certainly worth, you know, it's, it's a good base to start working on. I would uh, probably prize the LED out. Um, I'd probably get rid of the flashing. I might attempt to put a coloured LED in and just use them as sort of like positionable indoor lights because they do produce a nice splash of light. Um, and I, I just like the chunkiness. It's quite, it's quite appealing. But yeah, they could, they could do with some improvements. But uh, they're a good, they're a good sort of a uh, starting ground. Now it comes with this hardware, which is just studs. I'm guessing that's just uh, basically a. Uh, universal length screw so that you basically you can put a nut on either side of one of these studs to actually mount it. Um, but yeah, oh, it's alright. It's, it's quite a neat little light. I, I just like the aluminium extrusion and the mounting bracket. It looks quite neat, like a little pin spot. But um, the quality of the LED, the quality of the drive socket is a bit dubious as well, but um, other than that, you know, it, it's it's a good toy. So that's that's what really counts, isn't it?